I'm Yvonne, and this is... Bill Humby. Yeah! <laughs> Hi! Hello! How old were you when you started playing music? Whew! I was really young. My dad was a trumpet player, and oh. so there was always music around our house, so I could play it. I could blow a trumpet when I was four. Oh, really? And I got a little toy. I remember I got a little toy drum set when I was around the same age, but I ruined it in about a week because it was made out of like cardboard. Oh my but gosh. Uh, we always kind of had music around the house. My grandmother played piano, so okay. there was always something going on. So amazing. Okay, cool. And when did you start playing guitar? Well, I bought a guitar. Mm -hmm. um, right when I graduated from university, so I was 21. Okay. And I had some friends that played, so I, I kind of learned the three-quarter stuff. My first lick was um, some John Denver lick or something, you know? Yeah. And, um, but I didn't play guitar much because I was playing drums, actually. I, I actually oh, played yeah. in a lot of bands as a drummer, like lounge lizard kind of stuff. And my, my dad's band, like he played dance jobs all the time in Thunder Bay. Yeah. And um, I played with them, and I, oh, look at this, look at that. And I played at the, the Finlandia Club on on Saturday nights with Kaut Kokivi and we used to play oompas and the foxtrots and all that stuff. And then um, when I left Thunder Bay, well actually I, I played in a little band we sang a lot. We sang a lot. Yeah. So I had some friends and we sang like Crosby, Stills and Nash and the Eagles and all that kind of stuff. Classic rock kind of stuff. Yeah. And then when I moved away when I was 30, I didn't have anyone to play with. So then I started playing my guitar. and taking it a little bit more seriously. Oh, and so how did you get into bluegrass? Because that's what you do mostly now, Right. Isn't it? So I just had a friend of a friend said, hey, you guys should come to the BCBW, the, the precursor to Nimble Fingers. Okay. In about, I think it was 2020, or no, sorry, in 2000 or 2001. Mm -hmm. And uh, I showed up there and I literally did not know one <laughs> bluegrass song. Okay. And it was rather frustrating. Yeah, but yeah. But that, that was my first exposure. I knew bluegrass, like I'd heard a couple times, like different times in my life I'd seen and heard a little bluegrass, but mm. I was never really exposed. I never had any recordings or anything. And then I went there, and after that, for the last 20 years, I've just kind of gone, dove down the hole, yeah. right? So, uh, gone You're probably in. one of my favorite bluegrass singer guitar players, well, I have thank to say. You. Yeah, thank it's just you. so thank fun you. whenever we get to play together. Yeah, so, yeah, it's yeah, great. I feel like you know. You know all the songs. Right. That's, <laughs> that's what I've been trying to do. Learn yeah. as many songs as I can. And, and, and I learn songs because of the vocals. I, that's why, yeah. you know, there's a hook or something like that. I mean, that's just a, such a beautiful fiddle singing song. It's just totally. so perfect. It's great. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. Who has been your biggest musical influence? I don't know. I've had, I've had a lot of different ones, right? Like from, obviously, my dad and my grandmother. Yeah. Like, can I tell my grandmother's story? Sure, I'll yeah. tell my, like... I mean, I'm lucky, and I tried to expose my kids to as much music as I could, and I used to hate it, but every Sunday night, my grandmother would come over for dinner, and she'd always call me, my sister and I, into the into the living room, and she would play the same darn song every week. She'd say, oh, where, tell me, where has my Highland laddie gone? She would play the same song every week, and she'd make my sister and I sing along to it. Like, yeah. and we were pretty young. Like, I, I don't know, I'm going to say like seven or eight or, and ten. My sister's a couple years older. But what I realized after a while is like, she taught me to sing the melody and my sister sang the harmony and then I learned to sing the harmony and my sister sang the... So oh, like I have my like a good music grandmother lesson. thing because yeah. it was like drilled into my brain from an early age. Cool. And then when I used to play trumpet with my dad, like he would write stuff out for me and I would play the lead and he would play the second trumpet and then we would... So I had a lot of exposure to that when I was a kid. That's cool. But I mean, yeah. I've, I've had so many different things from, from jazz to bluegrass to mm -hmm. whatever. I've had a lot of really good influences. And, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Who's your favorite guitar player or singer? Um, oh, there's quite a few. Like, I, I, I really like Brian Sutton. Yeah, he's amazing. And, and you know, I kind of signed up for his online <laughs> lessons oh, and stuff, yeah, right? Because yeah. they're, they're really good and he'll, like, give you critiques and stuff. Anyway, that, that was good. But, I like, um, Josh Williams is really good. Um, I mean, there's stuff from so many, like, going back and listening to Larry Sparks, like, he plays a completely different style, but there's really some cool mm -hmm. stuff that he does. I mean, I don't consider myself a flashy guitar player, mm -hmm. and, and I never really got, like, heavily into Tony Rice licks and all that kind of stuff, because, yeah. I don't know, when I first started, I was so intimidated about flat picking that it's, you know, it's really taken me in the last five years before I really felt comfortable flat picking. Right. So I, I listen to more Tony Rice and, and that kind of stuff now, mm -hmm. but, um, I mean... Probably those people. I mean, I got a chance to, to 
spend a week with Molly Tuttle at Nimble Fingers a couple years ago, and that was pretty incredible. They're, I mean, they're all great, but uh, I wouldn't say I have one person that I, Brian's my go-to guy. Right. For sure. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. Fair enough. That's good. Yeah. I mean, can't really go wrong with yeah, any yeah. of these people, right? Yeah. So they're so amazing. Sure. thing about the bluegrass genre yeah. is it you can go around the world and so yeah. the best thing that happened is a long story I coach I was a swim coach I coached at the University of Calgary and when I was leaving everyone wanted to give me a going away present and they gave me a Calton case and so then I could anywhere I wanted to go I could bring my guitar yeah and so I traveled the world with my guitar and I've been 
I've been I found a bluegrass community in Hawaii that I go and play with a lot, uh -huh. and um, you know all over North America I found like the bluegrass clubs and gone. Yeah. I got to jam with one of the founding members of the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band in Los oh. Angeles at the Soup Jam in Long Beach. Like I've been <laughs> Pretty cool, but the number one neatest place was I was going to Mallorca, Spain, for a swimming training camp. No kidding, in 2009, and I put it out on Facebook. Hey, is there anyone in Mallorca that wants to play some bluegrass? And this guy, Angel Martinez, messaged me and says, "I'd love to." And he came to my hotel with his banjo. Oh my! Gosh. And and he played. And there's a band from like the 70s called Tubular Bells, Mike mm -hmm. Oldfield and Tubular Bells, mm -hmm. and he used to tour with them. And then he had kids and he stopped playing music because he was busy, he worked at an airport and yeah. And this was the first time he'd actually played with anyone. He's like, he was getting ready to retire. Yeah, yeah. And he busted out a ton of bluegrass songs and he, and he showed me uh, Ticket to Ride Beatles tune in bluegrass style. I never heard that. And we ended up putting it on our album. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> and, so And we funny. sat at the hotel two days in a row and we just played. <laughs> And, and we're still friends, like you know, twenty yeah. or twelve years later. Yeah. And he and after that, he went and started a band and toured Europe. After, so it was kind of neat that we had that experience together. He sent me his like CD. I sent him my CD. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, so that's, that's so cool. It's pretty cool. And that's the neat, the beauty of bluegrass. It's like yeah. a language that everyone speaks around the world, right? It's beauty, so. of really, music in general too. Hey? Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's yeah. amazing. So one last final funky little question okay. here for you. You ready? Yeah. What's your favorite dessert? Ooh. <laughs> uh, I like a lot of different things. Um, <laughs> one I make or one that I just like to eat. I don't know. I, I like a lot it. of things. Whatever, you, whatever you floats your I've boat. Been known, I've been known to be quite a, a flan man. Flan man. I make the flan. I really like I like the flan. Ooh, okay. I like that, but I mean, that's probably, yeah. Yeah, Getting fancy. I'll go with that. I like okay. flan. Flan? Awesome. Okay. Plan man. Yeah. Well, Bill, you're awesome. Thank you so much for doing this oh, with me. Oh, it's a pleasure, Yvonne. So fun. Always so Always. much fun to play with you. Thanks. Thanks. Yep. Oh, my God. Okay, should we try this? Yes, we should. <laughs> okay. Tag, yeah. Right. That's right. No, you're right. Is that okay? That's the best way to do it. <laughs> it's the best way to do it, for sure. That was so pretty. Not bad. Gorgeous. 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 <laughs> Gorgeous. Cool. And in fact, you're one of hardly handsome, aren't you? <laughs> I'm hardly handsome, I suppose. You played a couple gigs. You played a couple gigs yeah. with hardly handsome. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. That's right. <laughs>